Hi, this is Ashley Eckstein, voice of Ahsoka Tano, and thank you for listening to the Super Awesome Geek Show. Hey, hey, I just got wind of a new store in the area. Let's go check this place out. <laughs> Plastic Universe, now open. He-Man, G.I. Joe, Star Wars, and Ninja Turtles, toys and collectibles, Plastic Universe. When you walk in the store, you are immediately like impressed. There's a lot of stuff in here. I didn't expect a new store to have this much stuff. Um, usually stores take a little while to get like off their feet, but this guy has clearly been collecting a huge amount of stuff to put in for, uh, to fill up the store. At the point when I walked in, he'd only been, a, 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 he'd only been, uh, open for three weeks. So, um, this was the start of basically the end of his third week. It's got a lot of, uh, displays in here for you to walk in and look at, um, Smurfs and stuff in this cabinet. Tons of Smurfs. It's like, wow. <laughs> and then there's some uh, Japanese anime stuff, Star Wars things down there. Those droids. He, man, he's got a Barbie, life-size Barbie box that you can stand in and get your picture in. We saw the Batman with the Joker stuff painted on it, and he's got this Aliens display. Star Wars and the other banners up there, vintage stuff. E.T. with Elliot. You can stand behind it and get your picture. Carbonized Han. So lots of cool, like, life-size display material in here. He's got um, tons of Spawn figures. This guy, some of this stuff came from his personal collection. And uh, I think all this Spawn stuff must have probably came from that. He's got a couple aisles full of it. He's got some graded stuff here. Graded Star Wars. Pretty cool. With the certificates and all the information for each one. The acrylics and everything. Booklets. Mail order stuff. The owner's been collecting his entire life, so he is he is a lifelong collector. He's not new to the hobby at all. Prototype stuff. He's got some prototypes from uh, the sequels, and uh, is that Django Fett, right? Black series. And then he's got these uh, original Kenner coming down the side here again. And then we've got some Star Wars, various things, Black Series. It's pretty interesting. A little bit of everything in this place. This droid set was pretty cool. Had a probe droid in it, which is nice. Lots of stuff from the parks in here, from the Disney parks. Cygor. More spawn stuff here. And then we've got some vintage and retro. Vintage TVC, the vintage collection, and retro here. And he's got an, a giant wall of carded Star Wars and stuff. It just goes on and on and on. This one's interesting. A custom. It's got a few custom things sprinkled in here and there. And then we've got some uh, Disney Park stuff. The Look, she's in here on her own. But yeah, we've got some Disney Park specialty droids either holiday pride whatever you know some of that stuff is hard to get when it's at the park so he must have been you know buying multiples 
been there at the right time. Got a few more prototype type things up here. G.I. Joe prototypes things. G.I. Joe loose figures. His prices are okay for being in a store, being brick and mortar. It's probably on par with other th other places. It's on um, I'm I'm too much of a deal hunter. I hunt for deals. And so it's a little bit up there for me to purchase a couple things. But um cuz I know in my hunting I can find things for better prices but it's probably pretty good for being a brick and mortar store I just saw that at uh, Ross for 25 bucks I, I was thinking about getting it just to have it some graded more graded figures more uh, G.I. Joe It's cool to see just such a wide variety of Star Wars G.I. Joe vintage and modern prototypes and graded uh, loose packaged. You know what I mean? It's like it's just a little bit of everything. And um, that's what people want to see when they come in a store because you've got variety. You've got choices, you know, and. You can collect how you want to collect. If you want to collect graded, you've got it here. If you want to collect stuff that's in the package, you've got it here. If you want to collect loose, complete, loose, just the figure itself, you, you it's here. So he's got a really good variety of things for uh, just about every collecting habit, every collecting style. And uh, pretty much something that would hit everybody's collection. Whether you're focused on... Star Wars, G.I. Joe, Transformers, or He-Man, or Robotech, Gundam, you know, he's, he's got a little bit of everything in here, so it's pretty cool. And again, no matter what era you collect, it's probably here. I really want that V-19. I've always wanted one of those, the Torrent Starfighter. That's pretty cool. Some actual vintage carded G.I. Joe. Action Force. I love that he even has stuff from other countries here. Fun School. I've got a lot of those Fun School things because I bought them from that swap shop. I want that one. I need that one. I don't have that one. Barbecue is one I really want and need. Really cool. It's a nice store. I I wish him well. I hope this place does uh, does good. We need more places like this in the area. More spawn. Like I said, I think I think he must have brought over his own spawn collection. Turtles. Lots of turtles stuff here. He's definitely a turtles fan. The corpse, the core, whatever you want to call it. Modern core figures and vehicles. Pretty cool. Turtles. He's got some turtle stuff in here that I've never seen. I like the pizza guy. He's funny. But in the store, he had some, like, I don't remember this moose guy. He's got some stuff that I don't remember seeing. There's the Triceratops dude. That's cool. I think it was over here. Oh, this was the Aliens Predator cabinet. Nice. Thundercats, He-Man, Ghostbusters. 
starting lineups. Remember those? Well, there was even some just recently, right? I don't think the new ones hit the shelves. They were just online. He-Man. We've got some classics. We've got Origins. Yeah, it's all kinds of stuff. I, those other people that were in the store, I met them, talked to them for a little while. He's also a lifelong collector, big into G.I. Joe. He was really cool to talk to him and his girlfriend about this stuff and what they collect. They were looking at the packaged figures over in the next wall, which I'll get to in just a second. Some of these things are just really cool. He's got print art. You know, in uh, what do you call it? The when you the proofs. What's a proof? You 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 can. You know, they give you a proof. You okay, and then they go into print. He's got some of the proofs there, for the card art and stuff. Prototypes and uh, foreign uh, mailaways, and he's got um. Some foreign bootlegs, Mexican, South American, stuff like that. Lots of bootleg stuff went on down there. Graded, carded figures. And vehicles. Graded proofs. Thing is, the proof things are so expensive. I don't even know where to get them. It's like it's like, how do you even get those things? You know, they're they're insane. Well, now we know you buy them from this guy. That's where you get them. Disney Park stuff. Sculpts and prototypes and bootlegs. Made in Yugoslavia, a bootleg battle cat. Or is that Big Jim's tiger, you know? Because Battle Cat came from Big Jim. Prototype G.I. Joe stuff. It's early 2000s, though. I'm, uh, that's when I thought they were weird. They weren't necessarily all O ring figures at that point. Yeah, here's some carded. There's some good stuff in this cabinet. And uh, Roadblock, got him. Cobra Commander, got him. I've got these wide cards from... Uh, were these Argentina, I think? I don't remember exactly. The big, the big cards. Stuff from Brazil. I've, I've got a couple of these. There's Italian ones, there's Fun School. I got examples of a lot of these. I was actually asking him if he bought from the same place I did because there's so much of this that is the same as what I have in my collection of the uh, cards from other countries for G.I. Joe that it's like this, looking at the same exact collection almost, you know, that I have. So I'm like, did we find? Did we go to the same place and buy these? <laughs> but no, he doesn't think so. He never heard of the swap shop, so he didn't. Which I'm surprised, being in South Florida, that you'd never heard of the swap shop. You know, flea market. All these carded Star Wars, pretty cool to see. Some of the mail order stuff. The Gamorrean Guard is signed, autographed. Pretty cool. Some last 17. Here's an Ewok village that like play school thing. Pretty cool. I kind of want one of those. I know Dino has one, but of the play school Ewok village. A couple people in our group have it, I think. Some Star Wars cards. What do we got here? We got a 20 back with Boba Fett offer. The Jawas on a 12 back. That's cool. 
My jaw was on a 12 back too. Is that a hollow tubes? Let's take a look. Hollow tubes was only available on a Jedi card. No, it's not hollow tubes. Nope, it's a regular one. Yeah, if you if you see Return of the Jedi carded Tuscan Sand People, see if they're hollow tubes because it was only available on that. We've got some cardboard boxes and acrylic cases for the vehicles, vintage vehicles. This is cool. We got some posters and artwork here. He's got them protected in cellophane. So if you buy them, you can just carry them right out, protected as is. And what's pretty funny is the uh, cheer dish soap one. I'll show next. This is exclusive opening week in France. And this is the cheer dish soap from the 70s. 1978. I have all three of those promotional posters and I've had them since I was a kid. And it's fun to see one on the shelf at a store. Now Plastic Universe does do online stuff on YouTube and they have a podcast and he's got a pretty good studio back here with a lot of his personal collection it's going to be shown in the background. We got Funko Pops, we got Gundams, we got glass cases around the register area. That's a cool, I love these Hydrofoil, Conquest, we got Wild Bill, and the Silver Sky Striker. That thing is awesome. Lots of vehicles in here. That bridge layer is really dark. I don't know why it's so dark. I wonder if, there was, if they did a re-release. Star Brigade stuff, Cobra La, like this is kind of what I mean, I think he wanted, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks for the Cobra La, um, just the Globulus, and I just bought all three figures for $25, and they were complete, all three are complete, so... That's what I mean about finding deals. And it's not wrong to charge what he's charging just for Globulus. That's what I would charge if I had a brick and mortar store. But my my brain just can't get me to buy stuff at a brick and mortar store. I have to I have to hunt for a deal and like I found that deal. I've got a couple of big GI Joe deals that I just bought that are coming in and uh same with Star Wars, you know me. I've, But with Star Wars here, because there's a couple variants in this cabinet that I may end up coming back and getting. And the prices he's got them at are pretty reasonable. So, um, there's, I'm always on the hunt for more variants. And I know that for certain variants, you just got to grab them when you see them. Almost at whatever price you see them at. <laughs> just because... You're going to have a hard time finding them. And especially some of them that you really need to compare in person. You can't uh, go by pictures online because you never know if that's really what you're going to end up getting, you know. Like I brought, I bought my brown-haired Luke, farm boy Luke, uh, first Luke Skywalker from Star Wars. I bought him online and his hair looked a lot darker in the pictures than it is than it was when I actually got it. It was a light, really light brown. And I thought it was dark, dark brown. So it's kind of, that's what I mean by photos. You can't always judge the photos the right way as you can when something's in person. He's got his podcast and YouTube playing in the background on the TVs. He's got a Rolling Thunder there. He's got some of those big Star Wars play sets. Some of the large G.I. Joe vehicles, Star Wars vehicles back there on tables. Really cool. Well, that about wraps it up. Before we go, I do want to say the Toy Duo team is back for season two for year number two. It'll be this Saturday, noon PST, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, I'm part of the team, so I do highly recommend you check it out. It's on Vern's channel at Oker Studios. And uh, every Saturday we talk about the current news in toys. 
and uh, discuss our thoughts on what's coming up, what's up for pre-order. And we're going to be adding some new segments to the show in Season 2 in the year 2024. So uh, please check it out. It's going to be cool. It's a lot of fun. I always enjoy the discussion we have. And there's a rotating group of guests. You never know who's going to be able to make it on that week. There's, uh, There's a lot of us that are on this show. And different people show up every week. All right, cool. All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, Let me know what you thought of this. What's the coolest thing you saw in the store? And uh, Plastic Universe here in South Florida. By the Sawgrass Mall. If you know where Sawgrass Mall is, he's on the outer ring near the Wendy's. All right, guys, talk to you later. I'm John. I'm out of here. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.